Good morning, everybody. It's great to be with you for devotions on this Thursday morning. Um, as we dive into the book of 2 Samuel, um, and as I said a few days ago, if you uh, have been watching videos for the last couple of days, um, there are some tough uh, conversations and uh, tough readings that come out of this section of 2 Samuel. And uh, a lot of it has to do with David and his own sin and the consequences that come out about uh, through that. And so um, we're going to sing a hymn that uh, takes uh, an attitude of trust in what God is doing and how he is at work even in the midst of our failures and our desire that he would make things right, make things new, lead us in the right direction, even when uh, when we steer off course. So our hymn is number 758, The Will of God is Always Best. The will of God is always best and shall be done forever. And they who trust in him are blessed. He will forsake them never. He helps indeed in time of need. He chastens with forbearing. They who depend on God their friend shall not be left despairing. God is my comfort and my trust, my hope and life abiding. And to his counsel wise and just, I yield in him confiding. The very hairs his word declares, upon my head he numbers. By night and day God is my stay, he never sleeps nor slumbers. Lord, this I ask, O oh, hear my plea, deny me not this favor. When Satan sorely troubles me, then do not let me waver. O oh, guard me well, my fear dispel, fulfill your faithful saying. All who believe by grace receive an answer to their praying. When life's brief course on earth is run, and I this world am leaving, grant me to say, Your will be done, your faithful word believing. My dearest friend, I now commend my soul into your keeping. From sin and hell and death as well, by you the victory reaping. We hear from Second Samuel chapter 12. I'm going to begin with a, uh, a few verses that we read yesterday that lead into our section that we're reading today. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. Nevertheless, because by this deed you have utterly scorned the Lord, the child who is born to you shall die. And David went to his house. And the Lord afflicted the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and he became sick. David, therefore, sought God on behalf of the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. And the elders of his house stood beside him to raise him from the ground, but he would not, nor did he eat food with them. 
on the seventh day, the child died. The servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spoke to him, and he did not listen to us. How then can we say to him, the child is dead? He may do, some, he may do himself some harm. But when David saw that his servants were whispering together, David understood that the child was dead. And David said to his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes. And he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. He then went to his own house and when... He asked, they set food before him, and he ate. And his servant said to him, What is this thing that you have done? You fasted and wept for the child while he was alive. But when the child died, you arose and ate food. He said, While the child was still alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who knows whether the Lord will be gracious to me, that the child may live. But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he will not return to me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is a sad text. Understanding the consequences of David's sin. And uh, one of the things we talked about um, in uh, the last couple of videos is the um, understanding of the sin that David commits doesn't end with him. It continues on and affects so many different people. And, uh, and so we see the result of that here and we'll continue to see the result of that in, in, uh, in further readings. But also understanding that even in the midst of David's repentance, it doesn't mean that the world goes back to before he sinned and everything is made right, right? When we, when we break God's law, when we um, take our, our own advantage and we make our own decisions and we push forward um, and, and we, we break that understanding that God has set up in life and how we are to live in life in relationship to him and others, and we go outside of it. We, we push out of those bounds. Um, the consequences aren't just ones that affect us. There's further ripple effects that, uh, that happen because of that. And one of, the, um, one of the consequences, one of the things that results in David's sin is the, the death of this child, his son. And David recognizes in himself, this is, this is the center of the story here. He's the reason this all happened. He's the one who has brought this disaster and brought this calamity. And, and because of, of his sin and his guilt, he repents. And then he goes before the Lord in prayer and, and desire that the Lord would, uh, would also save this child in the midst of of David's brokenness. And this gets into uh, some of the, the hiddenness of the mind of God, right? As we ask the question, why does God allow this child to be a bearer of the consequences of David's sin? But why does God allow Uriah to be the bearer of the consequences of David's sin? Why does God allow Bathsheba to be part of this sin? Why does God allow any of the people in the midst of this to be uh, part of this sin and, and bearing the consequences of it? We don't know, right? Why does God allow this child to get sick and die? It's not for us to take that question and try to dive into the, the scriptures with that. We, we take what God tells us and reveals to us, and then we try to make sense of that in understanding how he's at work in David's life, how he's at work in his kingdom, and then how that shapes us in our response also. So we see David, and his actions are 
unique in that time period, right? Normally, um, there would be a time of lament and fasting and and putting on sackcloth and ashes. You would you would you know break open your you rip open your clothes at the death of someone you loved uh, and grieve them that way. We see that throughout Scripture in lots of different cases. David does it differently, where he grieves in the midst of this child's illness and desires that God would have mercy according to his will. And then God doesn't save the child. And then out of his grief, David rises and he goes to God's house to worship, which was probably about seven miles away where the tabernacle was at this point. And no one can quite understand why is he going to to worship when he has just received this punishment from God, right? The the, the guilt that, that he is riddled with. They're, they're worried that he's going to hurt himself and kill himself in hearing this news. And instead, they see him getting up and finally taking food and eating and and being kind of restored in the midst of this. How can that be? And David shows an understanding of the will of God and the consequences of his sin, which he bears. And God takes this child to be with him according to his reasoning and will. And David has a unique attitude of trust that he shows in this, where they ask him, David, what's what what's wrong with you? Why would you act this way? And he says, I can't bring this child back. I've done what I've done. And God has shown me the consequences of my sin also through this. The only thing I can do is ask God for forgiveness again and continue to shape my life back to him. Similar to the attitude of Job that Job uh, shows in the midst of his grief where he says the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's a hard attitude for us to to have and to to show toward God uh, in the midst of our not being able to understand why some people get sick and some people don't. Some people get sick and they get better and some people get sick and then they die. Why God? Why them? Why this result? And one thing we learn from this section, or maybe the attitude of David, is it's not always for us to question why. But it is for us to say, Lord, continue to redeem, continue to save, continue to make your will done, continue to bring your kingdom into this world that is full of sin and death and the brokenness that we all share and we all experience the consequences of, and we all suffer because of each other's sin. We say, Lord, continue to show me how you are at work in this, and may I trust in you when it is hard for me to trust. Help me to say, blessed is the name of the Lord, even in my grief and pain. And so at the end, David says, when they're asking him about his response. He says, can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he will not return to me. David understands in faith that he will be with this child again as he, at some point, experiences the consequences of his own sin in his own death. And so he looks forward to God's reunion that he brings and promises that God makes in 
knowing that this is not the end of this child's life, nor his own. He knows that God can bring about a kingdom that is eternal, where David and all people will reign over the Lord of lords and King of kings, the son that God sends into the world in order to die for you and me. Blessed be the name of the Lord, who through Jesus rescues us from sin and death. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, sometimes we don't understand how you are at work. We know that you overcome all things. You overcome our sin because of Jesus' blood shed for us. You overcome death by Jesus' resurrection from the grave. And yet we don't see all the effects of that in our time today, where we see sickness and want and desperation and death. Lord, help us and turn our eyes in worship of you, in knowledge of your promises that you have made and fulfilled, and that you will fulfill for us when Christ comes again to bring us all to be with you and raises us and David and this son of David and all of us from the dead. Lord Jesus, come quickly. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.